I'm Neil Payne. And I'm Kirk Lyons. And this is All Things Confederate. Today, Neil, uh, I thought we ought to talk about the Bass Children's case. Yeah, bring us up to date on what's going on. With well, those. let's go back in a little ancient history just for our viewers who may not remember. In 2008, the uh, National Sons of Confederate Veterans Reunion was held in Concord, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. As you know, one of the homes of NASCAR, very famous there. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, NASCAR has uh, made a little sordid business of cleansing their, their past of Confederate flags and symbols, and they've uh, been pretty obnoxious about that. Um, the National Reunion in Concord um, was very highly sought after by the city of Concord, and as a matter of fact, their Chamber of Commerce put close to $18,000 at the SCV's um, use mm -hmm. for, for putting on the reunion. So they really wanted the business, right. and they made special deals for all the hotels that were around there through the convention center, if you're uh, coming for the SCV reunion, they would make uh, special rates for you if you stayed at one of the area hotels. Right. Well, um, Baz Childress, who was lieutenant commander of Kentucky Division, um, was coming to the reunion and he made arrangements for a hospitality room at the Wingate Hotel mm -hmm. in uh, Concord, North Carolina. And as you know, if you've gone to the SCV reunions, the Kentucky room is one of the famous That's right. kind yeah. of room, hospitality rooms at you the can reunion. Get some good hospitality. That's right. And uh, they were actually going a little upscale. They got a suite because, you know, usually Kentucky just rents a room with two beds in it and then packs it with as many people as will fit in there right. uh, and then plies them with music and libations. This year, um, Bass was going to go a little upscale. He got a whole suite. So mm -hmm. it actually was nice. He made one mistake, though. One bad mistake. Was he put the Confederate flag in the room window. Oh, yes. Real bad. And uh, the owner uh, heard about it and came up there and made a remonstration. And, of course, the party was just beginning, uh, and there was a bunch of people in there. Mm -hmm. And he basically said, take the flag down. And, and uh, Baz very aptly pointed out, well, there's nothing... You gave me no information that this flag would have been unwelcome in the room. Yeah. There's nothing in my contract. Right. And the Wingate knew that this was the Sons of Confederate Sons Veterans. Sons of Confederate Veterans. So, so you can expect some Confederate flags in such an event. Absolutely. So he finally says, I don't care about all that. Take the flag down. And he said, no. So... Um, the owner called the cops. Really? They sent the Concord Police Department over there who tried to mediate the dispute. And, and uh, um, Baz said, no, I'm not taking it down. It's not my contract. I do not have to. And you'll be in breach of contract. And so the owner said, fine, arrest him. So they took him out. Um, they didn't cut him. Well, that's very But nice. they took him out and took him to a substation and booked him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let him go. Of course, destroyed the party. Party's mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Um, did it before it even started. So, um, Baz had to appear before um, uh, a, a Cabarrus County Court on the um, uh, I'm sorry. criminal trespass. Is okay. what it was. His criminal trespass. The guy didn't even show up. Didn't even notify. The, um, the, the prosecutor, the guy that had him arrested, the owner okay. did not even did not even notify the prosecutor that he was not going to show up to prosecute. Mm -hmm. So they dismissed the case. It was dismissed with prejudice. Mm -hmm. So now um, uh, Baz filed a um, malicious prosecution claim and a breach of contract claim against uh, the Wingate Hotel there that the local affiliate mm -hmm. uh, of the Wingate and the owner. And uh, claiming basically two causes of action, um, retail, um, uh, malicious prosecution mm -hmm. and uh, breach of contract. Well, the um, owner got a big city lawyer in Charlotte and she came blowing in there and filed a, uh, a really lousy brief yeah. <laughs> for all the money that <laughs> the owner must have paid for it to have the case dismissed. Uh -huh. And um, our uh, Baz's attorney uh, argued it in court. Uh, he's a young man named Jeff Mabrito, um, who's from Texas. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we know Jeff very well. Very fine young man, fine attorney, recently married. Mm -hmm. And uh, he argued the case. Uh, I think he did an excellent job. Um, the, the judge 
dismissed the uh, malicious prosecution claim. Mm -hmm. Didn't say why. Mm -hmm. Just didn't say why. So it was appealed to the Court of Appeals, and everybody's saying, oh, my gosh, uh, case is already dismissed, hadn't even started. Well, you know, this stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And one thing that people in our community need to learn is that at the local level, you get very little justice if you're a Confederate. You just got almost got to count on getting hometown or swine pushed or something. They're going to dismiss your case. Generally, where we have won in the past historically is in appeal cases. Yeah, and that's really better. Yeah. Because it makes precedent. Absolutely. When, when that happens, you get a precedent in the law and an appeal or, or uh, when it moves further up right. the court system. And you have a higher court that's spanking a lower court. And that's mm -hmm. not bad either when that's they're right. going to be dealing with you. So um, the case went to the Court of Appeals, and um, we actually had uh, Tim Wyatt, who's the judge advocate, of uh, North Carolina Division, draft and write the appeal. Yeah, yeah, another one of our, our job. really uh, good young Southern attorneys that are stepping up to the plate. Uh, I commend Jeff Mabrito and Tim Wyatt. They're both uh, bright and excellent lawyers uh, and young and aggressive, and we really need more uh, attorneys out there to uh, to step up and, and do your part for the Confederacy. Well, he did a slam dunk job and then went and argued it Mm -hmm. at the Court of Appeals, and the court agreed. Mm -hmm. And um, they uh, put back the uh, um, malicious prosecution claim, so that's now back on the table. Mm -hmm. Well, they sent it back to the court, the, the Superior Court, and the Superior Court just sat on it for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. And finally, they've shown a little uh, lack of lethargy mm -hmm. and have now set the case for mediation. Mm -hmm. And next week, uh, February 21st, uh, we'll be going down to mediate the case, uh, and a mediation basically is a uh, a chance to kind of talk out the case and hopefully resolve it without having to use the legal process. And mo a lot of courts require that now. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Not a, in general, but usually it doesn't accomplish anything. Well, of course, you know, if you if you think that most cases do settle, mm -hmm. and a lot of cases can be resolved that way it, because the mediator is usually an experienced attorney, mm -hmm. and he can look at the... Um, um, pros and cons of both sides mm -hmm. and uh, see what the weaknesses in both cases are and then just basically kind of roughhouse them a little bit, get them back in a small office and say, look, you're going to get cream. You need to pay up. <laughs> so it, it can be a good thing. This kind of case, though, as you were, as you pointed out, this kind of case doesn't tend to settle no. because it's political. We all know what's really going it's on here. It's a political case. It is. All the rules change. All the rules change. So... Really, probably the only way I think it probably would settle is they pay uh, pay Baz a lot of money, and then we promise not to talk about it. Right. I mean, that would probably settle it mm -hmm. uh, if Baz is amenable to that. Uh, uh, it does set a precedent, even though you really can't talk about the precedent. You know, people understand that money was paid, and if they're not talking about it, then people assume that it was a lot of money. That's right. <laughs> so uh, the case is set for trial. For March 12th, we're also going to do some depositions. We're going to take uh, Baz's deposition and uh, um, take um, uh, the owner's deposition, and that'll probably suggest what other discovery we need. Mm -hmm. So we may not go to trial on March 12th, but we could. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, if the judge wants to get this thing done and out of his court, we may actually go to trial next month in March. So we need to prepare for this, and we need you all to pray about this. And we need y'all to become members of the Southern Eagle Resource Center. It costs you the princely sum of $35 so that we can help um, Baz's litigation team win this thing. It's, it's an important case. And um, it, it sets a very bad precedent when people can be arrested for having a flag in their room at a national SCB reunion. And the... Uh, the assembly of the reunion assembly was much behind Baz, and I think that your average SCV member wants Baz to have his day at court. And the way you do that is support us. Send a generous contribution, Send a, buy a membership for $35, and um, we'll have information at the end of this video as to where you can send that. Thank you for uh, listening to us, and uh, we'll be back again with another episode of All Things Confederate.